when the disaster first happened, we uh, encouraged everyone to apply. Uh, people had to apply. We provided home repair assistance. We provided rental assistance. We provided um, uh, replacement assistance to everyone. We also had the TSA program where we house individuals um, most immediately. And um, basically, we determined the eligibility. They had to prove their identity. They had to prove occupancy. Uh, we did inspections for them and uh, determined their eligibility. Hi, my name is Christy Lambright. I work for Harris County, specifically Harris County Community Services Department. Um, at the time of the storm, uh, Harris County, of course, has our ONC, uh, our emergency center, operation center, sorry, uh, which we operated 24-7 uh, for about three weeks, I feel like. Uh, there the whole time, answering phones. Uh, I was in the call center uh, helping out our citizens, whether they were in the city of Houston, whether they were in Fort Bend County. I got calls from uh, Port Arthur uh, during the active part of the storm. Uh, we were helping people to evacuate. Since then, uh, right after the storm, probably about two weeks after the storm, uh, Harris County Community Services and our partners uh, in the engineering department actually went out and went door to door to each of our citizens in unincorporated Harris County and a couple of our uh, cooperative cities, one being the city of South Houston. Uh, we went door to door to, to help uh, see where we are, see where people were in their homes, how were they faring now that it was two weeks later, what did they need. Uh, we distributed uh, I think it was about 10,000 flyers of information of community resources. A lot of your information. I see Baker Ripley up there. I had uh, phone numbers for them. I had uh, FEMA numbers. Uh, so we were distributing that information, getting it out to uh, people like in Aldine who were, um, and I had Spanish speakers with me so we could communicate um, that might not or have a fear of government to try to kind of put a face to a government and say, you know, we're here to help. We're not here to you know, get into any kind of situations of, did you owe taxes or okay. So while we were doing that came is we noticed that people in Aldine were having a great need for home repair. And that, that what kind of started off and spurred our planning for our CBG funding. So as mentioned by the GLO, uh, HUD has granted the first $5 billion to the state. And in the state, they have granted Harris County and another allotment for the city of Houston, $1 billion. That's a B a billion dollars for uh, helping our citizens recover in that group right? each. So that Harris County, and unincorporated Harris County, and our 33 other small cities, not city of Houston, other three uh, small cities, we were gonna be using that money. Of that one billion, approximately 800 million will be for housing repair. Um, that money will go to single family um, reconstruction, uh, new construction, uh, home repair, et cetera, et cetera, and also multifamilies for renters to put new uh, units on the ground to repair units that were destroyed or affected uh, in, in that also. We are also going after hazard mitigation grants, which we will help to do elevation, reconstruction, and the sorted uh, drainage, because if I don't take care of the drainage, I'm going to have the same problem in a couple of years, hopefully not this year, uh, of, of rainstorm coming back and flooding those homes. So in a nutshell, kind of in a roundabout way, that's, that's what we're up to. All right. As far as uh, the services and assistance that the city of Houston was able to provide immediately after the storm, we really focused on sheltering and so worked with many of the partners out in, uh, in the audience uh, to provide um, immediate assistance and, and sheltering services for those individuals, both at the, you know, uh, those that were at the George R. Brown and, and, and other facilities we worked on um, with New Hope Housing as part of um, the emancipation uh, facility. So we really focused on sheltering. Um, at this point, and, and Krista did a, an amazing job of kind of summarizing the work that we're doing right now, um, because we, uh, we are working with case managers um, to assist those individuals that are coming through um, the GLO and, and FEMA's program um, as part of the you know the dollar the um, the uh, uh, MHU which is um, um, and, and the RVs um, as Krista mentioned um, as well as the direct lease program so we are we are working on administering that um, right now and anticipate that that will wrap up um, soon 
um, and, and are now in the process of, of doing pretty comprehensive uh, community engagement meetings and, and um, we are hoping that we can share those dates with everyone um, so that we can better inform um, the amendment to the state's action plan, um, which was submitted to HUD on May 8th. Um, we anticipate that we can have a draft ready um, by the beginning of June and um, provide that for a 14-day public comment period uh, between um, June uh, 6th and the 20th. So uh, welcome input from all of you um, as far as the programs that are being proposed in that. Um, again, those programs are being informed by the community engagement meetings that we're, that we're scheduling uh, between now and, and uh, the beginning of June. We will continue community engagement meetings as we work to define uh, the program guidelines so our community engagement meetings will not end after we submit the action plan we're hoping that um, input from all of you as well as residents throughout the city are it, are able to inform the programming we all know that the home repair need for low-income families in Houston is is more than the, the money that so far has has, has been um, an allocated or participating or received what are the trade-offs, the tough trade-offs that you all are thinking about as you put together um, this action plan, and what are the decisions that you'll be looking for community input on? Yeah, you all want to get that. Sure. So I, I, I think at this point we we're really focused on making sure that that we are um, that we are informed as far as the unmet, unmet needs assessment that we're conducting. Um, that we are at this point still working on compiling um, data from. From FEMA, um, you know the National Flood Insurance Program, uh, the um, the SBA loans that were made available, um, the workforce housing. You know, it, there's really a, a whole series of, of um, data points that we're working to collect right now and compile um, as part of the decision making. Um, in addition to um, going out and, and meeting with residents. So uh, to kind of get to the trade-offs. Uh, at this point, it's very difficult to say whether what's going to go in or what's not going to go in. I know one of the things that automatically is going to, be based on the data that we also have been, you know, I have the FEMA data to the address level, so I could actually go in and see what a neighborhood looks like, what happened to this neighborhood. You're Why? Me so jealous right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, you know, a lot of times it was funny because in the data we actually saw a lot of zeros. So why do we have these hot spots in zero? So one of the points of the kind of the trade-offs, I guess it is, is where do we focus our our, our marketing efforts? Uh, we are also doing a series of town hall meetings, or open house meetings throughout the county. And the county is extremely large. It's like a, this rainbow around the city of Houston. So we're gonna go from one end to, I like to rainbow. I like rainbow. <laughs> uh, around the, the county, around the city. And we're gonna do some partnership um, activities with it. Because as you know, most people don't even know if they're in the city or if they're in the county or if they're in Fort County so and they don't care they just want to know how to get their house fixed so for home repair we put that as probably the one of the highest priority so we're not going to trade off that one that that's a, a, a very high point for us and we are already actually intaking people we have a, a, a website that's already set up um, harrisrecovery.org where we are asking people to go ahead and tell us we haven't even got the money yet but we want to know if you're interested in home repair so if you have clients out there in home repair that that maybe need that you know they're above where y'all are right now in the money mark uh, we can the GLO has this going to about 65,000 for a rehab and then the cost of any reconstruction that we need to do which is you know we tear down the house and we really build it above you know the flood uh, two feet above the flood 500 flood uh, level uh, that way we help we, we're making a better product for that area so we we've, we've really focused on that and when we go out to do our public meetings, that's one of the things that we're, we are not trading off. We're going to be doing that one. Other parts is, do we need an elevation program? Do we need a reconstruction program? What other things do we need that are around that, you know, rebuilding that home? Um, what kind of drainage uh, improvements do we need? So we're not just looking at one type. We're trying to look around, you know, is there a need for a park that actually helps retain water? You know, because that's what parks do, really. <laughs> You play on them and then they help to retain that water when we have those bad storms. So we're kind of looking at a holistic community plan. So if you have clients, once again, I'm going to plug that website one more time, um, harrisrecovery.org. Uh, the homeowner goes in, they fill out a pre-application and that gets them into our service. And then once the, once the money comes down, we will flip that to a application process where we'll start doing, be doing intake. Great, uh, that's exciting. And we will add 
add that to our little I referral to you. the GLO and FEMA. And um, I know I've gotten a lot of questions about the dollar program. Uh, specifically, a whole lot more people qualify for the PREPS program than the dollar program, which is you know, part of the intent. But um, on the dollar program, if, first of all, how many people are you know, currently on the list that qualify, and then if, if, if somebody here believes that one of their clients should have qualified but, but didn't, um, is there any way to get to refer into that or get on the list? And um, I look, I'm looking at Krista now. For a household to be eligible for any of the direct housing mission programs, they have to have registered with FEMA. Mm -hmm. And when their home is inspected, if, the, if FEMA determines they have above $17,000 in what's called FEMA verified loss, that's based on their determination, then those households, if they state they have a need, a housing need, then they are eligible for the direct housing program. So it's, it has been confusing for a lot of households, and I get that because they want to call and say, can I get on that list? And that's not, there's not really a list. It's registering with FEMA to become eligible for that program. Yeah, and I think more specifically, and this, feel free to push back on this, but sure. I've heard, heard from, from folks in the room and, and, and others that, that on the, the question of do they have a household need, right? Do, do they have a need for, for, um, for home repair that that, that can be phrased in a way that if they have um, that, that where there's some subjectivity, so where you know a person may have a temporary place to stay, but not really a place to stay for you know for for uh, for more than a month or so, and, and and then that disqualifies them. So if there's if around that question, if they want to contest um, that question at all, is there a way they would have to call FEMA, the okay. one eight hundred number, and then they can you know, inform them my ho my temporary housing status has changed. Um, so maybe they were above that 17,000 FEMA verified loss. If they call FEMA 1-800-621-FEMA. Um, six six two two one 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 <laughs> yeah. um, they, if they call that number, then they can uh, speak to a representative and they can inform them their housing need has changed. So for example, maybe at the beginning of the disaster, they were staying with family members. We know that doesn't go well. <laughs> I'm aware of that. I've, I've worked other housing programs. Um, and so that, that, oh, I can stay with my relatives for a couple months turns into multiple months and that just doesn't turn out well. Then their housing need has changed, mm -hmm. you know? And so they can call back. Uh, and then again, it's up to FEMA to determine eligibility. Dolores, do you want to add anything to that? No, because you touched on all of it. They have to have a FEMA verified loss for the dollar program. They have to have a FEMA verified loss of above 17,000 mm -hmm. and they can call the helpline to report any changes okay. to their case. And would you encourage you know, service providers that, 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 that think that that's the case to do so with their clients or about the clients or encourage their clients to do so if their housing situation has changed? Yes. Okay. And, and Krista, correct me if I'm wrong, the, um, I think we've had we've seen some individuals call and and we're told that the dollar program was no longer operational. I think there's a difference between the city of Houston and Harris County and the rest of the state. Is that correct? Um, all the programs are being operational right now. Um, we have had some households add, add into the programs. Preps is closed um, because that was there was a certain timeline on that because that's again considered a sheltering program. Um, and again, the eligibility for that is also different. Um, for dollar, our goal is to wrap up, um, y'all's program is different, but our timeline in the rest of the state is to wrap up um, with completing repairs by June, by the end of June. So um, we are well into that, but I know that y'all's timeline is different. You started a different timeline. So uh, the challenge with dollar it is a wonderful program. It has never been done in the contiguous 48 states. Um, it's only been done in Alaska and Guam. So Texas is the first state in the 48 uh, continental US that ha it's been uh, worked. The challenge with it is, and this is where a lot of households um, opt out of the program, is if they receive FEMA individual assistance dollars, they have to show receipts that they use that, those funds for what they were intended. 
So they were intended for repair and rebuild. They have to show proof that they used it. If they cannot show proof and they want to they want to still be within the dollar program, they then have to pay back that money to FEMA in order to be a participant in dollar. And that's challenging. And the reason it's challenging is there are some households out there that have never seen a $2,000, $3,000 check. And if you hand someone $30,000 without a lot of guidance, that can be hard for them to determine how to spend those funds appropriately. So it may be difficult for them to pay those funds back or to come to a conclusion on that. There are also some households that held on to that money so that they could spend kind of combine it with maybe a grant program that your group is providing. And the concept of them having to give that back is very difficult. Um, and so we've had a number of households say, I don't want to participate because I don't want to have to give that money back. And we respect that right. That's their choice. Um, so there are some challenges to that program as well. Christy, would love to hear, and I've, I've gotten questions. We had people submit their burning questions before this event. And one of those that I heard was, I would like easier access to whether my client is in a buyout zone or yes. maybe in a buyout zone soon and you know so that so that we, <laughs> we spend that money efficiently what would you tell those folks that's a hard one uh it has been until lately because when we do our meetings one of the booths that or the stations that we're going to have is information on the buyout zones so for the first time ever, I will say that at those meetings, so if you come and they're, on our, they're going to be on our website, the, the different locations, uh, we will have like maps where it actually talks about what the buyout zones are and the areas that we're focusing on first. Because we didn't just take the interest areas for the CBG DR program, of which $35 million is about to hit the ground. I've already applied for it. Uh, it was the first allocation is what the GLO call or what HUD calls it and the GLO has adopted. Uh, we got approximately 43 million of which 35 I have actually made an application for and it's for buyout purposes, for low to moderate income buyout purposes. We've identified approximately eight priority areas and we will be showing those priority areas. We are also working with flood control to get them to feel that they can maybe release their interest areas. Uh, we've been holding their hand, we've been talking with them, and so uh, we hope to be coming to Felicity for that one very soon also during our, our area. So if you come to our um, community meetings, our open houses, uh, we will have it there. We will also be putting out a website uh, after those meetings, uh, not only talking about what we found at the meetings, but also the maps and things like that. So actually we are getting very close to that process to be able to show you where we're going uh, where the first areas are. The first eight are actually 1,700 parcels of, and it's not just residential, it's residential businesses, open land. Uh, so that 1,700 are, is our first focus uh, for approximately 160 households, residence households. And that's just thir the first 35 million. There's actually 200 million that's programmed into the round one Harvey for buyout. And then we're actually going for hazard mitigation, which is another, I think it's another 1,000, 1,500. That we're there. And what, what's the timeline approximately on how you expect those programs to be rolled out? I'm sorry, I said I could hear the, the timeline on how you expect those those programs to be rolled out. So the first, we are actually already started. We actually have 15. Everybody remember the 15 floods? We actually got our money for 15 floods and actually are starting a, a soft rollout with eight. It was enough to do eight buyouts for that one. 16 floods is enough to do 160. So we should be getting our contract for that. I'm hoping. Um, Midsummer, maybe. No, I <laughs> I'm just saying GLO, maybe. <laughs> Not particularly you, Krista. Yeah. <laughs> I know you don't control that. No. Um, so we are hopeful to get our contract for that midsummer. I know what the contract is actually in their legal department, so that's always a good sign whenever contracts go to legal uh, within the GLO. Uh, and then for the first round, I'm thinking that we're hoping by the end of the year, first of the year, we'll have that contracted.